when I went to school for the first time. Mrs. Fell got everybody out and she uh, gave everybody some pencils, you know. Yeah. And all the kids were working and working and working. And then she started to look at what they were doing. And I ended up making a hurricane. <laughs> Just from the bottom to the top, like this. Ooh, 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 yeah, ooh, and like ooh. a tornado. Kind like of. a tornado. Yeah. It was going like this. And no other child in the whole <laughs> could place even draw a circle. Could, they <laughs> could even do a circle. So that yeah. was the starting of my art career, basically. Did you always think of yourself as an artist? Did you ever consider another way of being? Was that just, it was just always that? Yeah, because, you know, Mrs. After Mrs. Fell, you know, then... <laughs> you know. Your career was made. Well, it was, because I was always the class artist the, yeah. the whole time, you know, in, in all the way until now, I guess. And that one drawing. Yeah. And then, of course, I mean, it's, it's quite a, a well-told tale, but yeah. I think it's important to yeah. tell it. Yes. Where you fell into a lake. Yes. And you, well, you, I guess to all intents and purposes, you were drowning or you were yeah. on, the, on the verge of? Well, I, I, I went right to the bottom. Mm. And what did you see there? I saw uh, probably the most beautiful uh, world I'd ever mm -hmm. seen. Blue and green was just so incredible. And I didn't, I didn't, I had no fear. I just went right to the bottom, bloop, I landed. The water was probably about maybe this deep or something like that, I don't know. And then, uh, uh, you know, I just stood, stood there and I looked and I just saw the most beautiful vision of, of light and color and everything. It was just so beautiful. And, and then my that? uncle saw the bubbles <laughs> <laughs> at the bottom. <laughs> and, she, and, and he looked around, he realized, wow, where's Billy, where's Billy, you know? And then, so then, uh, finally, you know, he he just he he went and grabbed it. And then, when my uncle was 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 helping me, you know, he he was, I was pushing him away. I was pushing him away because I I just had seen. You wanted this, to be in that place. This incredible place. Mm. And, that, and you're, you're saying started. this as Tristan has ascended yeah, behind yeah, you yeah, right. in all of this water. <laughs> well, there it is. Yeah, and exactly. water has become such an important part of your work yeah. it's, as a yeah. metaphor, as a yes. vehicle, yes. as a, something that ref, it has a reflective yeah. quality and it's a really important element yeah. within this yes. exhibition as well. We were speaking earlier about your drawing and right. your notebooks right. and this place that you have in Long Beach which yeah. is an office, it's yeah. a room but it's a lot more than that, it's a library and yeah. Yeah, it's really the ground zero of where I kind of think of ideas and, mm. and, and you know, uh, I will read books and stuff mm. and all that stuff, you know, but just to, just to have that world and, and also for it to be absolutely quiet and still, you know, just to be there, to just, just feel it, you know. And then, and then in that way, um, you, can, you can begin to move it around, you know, if you're, if you're lucky, you know, you can, you can get some really interesting ideas just sometimes for just sitting around. The thing that has always been extremely clear to me from the very first time I saw your work was right. this distillation right. of so much that is unspeakable. I mean, yes. I don't have words for it. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about that process of yeah. that your thought right. and your, your note-taking and your right. distillation of right. ideas and then what happens to, to how they become the works that they become. Well, they become uh, that for this incredible person here. <laughs> I mean, she is uh, just an extraordinary woman. And I could never do what I do without her. You've known each other since 19... 79? 77, 77, actually. Yeah, yeah. 77. Oh, That's when right. the Scotch part started. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Was that really when the yeah. sculpture so, part yeah. started? Oh, yeah. 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 And I, I said earlier that when we were talking that you were both seekers, it seems to me that you were both, at that time, you'd already travelled independently, you'd already been seeking something which was outside of a material world. Well, I think that, um, you know, we both had travelled quite a bit as, in our separate ways um, before that. Um, That's very true. Bill had lived in Europe, he was in Italy, and I had lived in Europe, I was in England, and then I lived in Bulgaria as well. Yeah, mm. lots of adventures. I'm, I'm a very adventurous person. So I do a lot of things on my own. But uh, then I was working at La Trobe University, and, and um, I was very much involved uh, with the new music department as well. I wasn't working, I was working to... Um, to uh, establish a cultural program on campus, you know, for students and for the faculty. And um, so I did exhibitions and concerts and things like that with the help of other people. Um, and then we decided uh, to do a video show in 1977. And so um, Warren Burt, uh, this person who worked in the music department, he said, oh, I know this guy in New York. He's pretty good. <laughs> Should we invite him? And his father also works for Pan American Airlines. So he could get free airline tickets. So I said, yeah, well, bring him over. We'll see what happens. <laughs> That's how we met, basically. Yeah. Many of the works that are in this exhibition are made in really big spaces in Los Angeles or around and about near to where you live yeah. and work. And they're, you know, they're really big productions. Yeah. Some of them are really big yeah. productions. Mm -hmm. and some of them are very small, like, mm -hmm. for example, The Veiling, which is actually quite... Um, uh, it seems like a very complex piece. Actually, it's complex because sure. of the veils, really. Right. I think there's an integrity that runs right through your work. Well, you thank know, you. You, that's who you are as people. Yeah. But um, also in the making of the work, there there are no tricks. It, there are, you know, you're using certain yes. effects in your you know, you're manipulating right. the camera in some ways, but right. there's the trickery isn't there, so that when right. uh, water is water, and when someone is deluged in water or a liquid, they are deluged in it. There's no, there's yep. no trickery there. Or even if right. there's fire, as there is yep. with Firewoman, it's, yeah. there's, that woman is standing in front of a bank of fire that is yeah. almost, I mean, she had to be covered in yeah. heat-resistant <laughs> gel. Exactly. So there's a, a reality yeah. that runs through at every... Yeah. Yeah. every stage in the world. We've always done that. All these little things that we've been doing, we're, we're trying to get as authentic as possible. Yeah. You know? And one of the things I love about this show, and it's again, it's something that I learned when we worked with Yenka Shonibari, is mm -hmm. how you have this chapel, which is a special space in its own mm -hmm. right, and mm -hmm. then you make something really remarkable in it. Yeah. And that becomes either the beginning or the end of your journey, depending on how you right. want and to orientate yes. the, sh the mm -hmm. exhibition. Yes. But that journeying between places over mm -hmm. landscape. Right. Sometimes I think of it as a kind of a river. You know, it's just the river of life. And it's being moved along, carried along by these waves. And, you know, and then all of a sudden you stop to look at something. And then all of a sudden an idea pops into your head and then you go this way. And, and one of the things I find really moving about your work is that you have your, your you're dealing with these kind of crucial points in time, like yeah. birth and death yes. and ecstasies. Right. And so those very, yeah. um, where everything comes to a, a yeah. pinpoint. Exactly. And there's the kind of ordinariness of that mm -hmm. and who you are as a person yes. at the ordinary right. times. Yeah. yeah, it's a very special thing. Mm. I really believe it. It's just, it's, the life field is, is, where we are. We live in the life field. Because, you know, the, the, you know, what's happening is you've got birth coming this way and death going out that way. And Very we're, linear, huh? we're, the ones, <laughs> we're the ones in the middle right now. Yeah. You know? And so you start with birth and you have this incredible, thanks to the women, just this incredible being that, like, comes out of nowhere, you know? Just, where did it come from, you know? Wow. 
And then you sort of think about that, and then, you know, in the meantime, on the other side, you got people leaving. They're, you know, they, they, they missed the train. They're, you know, they're gone, sorry. And there was a point at which you, but you actually made you elected to bring in your home movies yes. into your yeah. into your work, where That's you right. decided not to make so much distinction between yeah. this part of my life and this part of my yeah. life. Yeah. Well, when my well, my mother died, you know, was the first inkling, and that was that was just really overwhelming. I just I can't even comprehend that. But then when my father passed away, it was really a little different. You know? it was, he was great. He was really always pretty healthy. And, um, and that, was, uh, that was really, you know, that was really, really helpful. And then when it was time for his, his uh, person to ascend, or whatever you want to call it, uh, that... Um, but then we, we just, I was, I remember vividly, it was just my, my brother was on one side of the bed and my, and I was on the other, and we just watched him expire. And, and I had never seen that before, really. And it was an epiphany. I, I, I just, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And I, there was a little light in the sky after he expired. And uh, and then I saw the dawn, you know, just rising. <laughs> you know, I could just see it right now. Mm. It's just so profound. So you just saw the trial here for the first time? Yeah. I mean, obviously you've seen it in yeah. the right. studio. And, yeah. But, yeah. It's, it's, it's premiering here. You've seen yeah. the, the, the yeah. first in the, installation In the perfect it. space for in the yeah. perfect which, space. Which Bobby, oh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Which it's Bobby gorgeous. Oblonsky uh, you know, measured up and yeah. created perfectly. Yeah, it's, per it's beautiful. Is it, I mean, is it a delight for you to see a work like that when you, for the first time, you know, in that environment? I was just, it was... It was beautiful, mm. you know, it was beautiful. And, you know, Kira had a lot to do with it. So, you know, also, so we were just... No, it's an emotional event. You yeah, know, just seeing you just, you. yeah. You've got to go down to these little micro kind of things when you want to make something great, you know? Everybody thinks they're huge and, you know, mm -hmm. Cecil D. De, D. DeMille stuff, mm -hmm. you know? But, but no, you have to really look where you are Think about what you're doing, being aware of what's around you, and all of that stuff has to gel to get a work of art out. Yeah. You know? And the thing with your work is we're not really just looking, we're not looking at films, we're looking at spaces that are filled with light and sound. Exactly. That are immersive yes. situations. Exactly. And therefore yeah. the architecture of right. those spaces is really, really important. And the architecture is very, very particular. You know, we, we heard Lutka in this room earlier talking about, you know, tuning this space yeah. for these pieces back here. Mm. Right. And he's absolutely right. He's a sound artist, but he's he also a great is sound a artist. Not in this show so much, but, but sometimes we start off a little bit lighter and then we get darker and darker and darker as we go into the space, depending on what kind of journey is being created in the exhibition. Before you came, before we even mm -hmm. started to try and install right. anything, mm -hmm. I felt really moved walking through those spaces. The yeah. sizes of the spaces yeah. equate to the size of the screen, but also the, the experience that mm -hmm. you engage yes. with in that space. Exactly. And so I felt really pleased yeah. when I saw the veiling. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's in, in a lovely the space room. that we have here. But the proportions are correct. Yeah. yeah. Proportions and, are, are um, huge. The that's feeling that you important. have when you see those, those beautifully cut openings mm. into the galleries and you can see through, the sight mm. lines are extremely important. And Bobby's always pushing, yeah, but we, we don't have the sight line here, we don't have the sight. Those are so important yeah. because yeah. then you're drawn further in, there's a mystery at the end right. of that, yeah. that 
hallway. Yeah. But you can't get you can't get to it yet because you've got this mystery to look at and that mystery yeah. to look at, you know, before you get to that one. But it's always there and it's always leading you on.